We know that the Unix shell can be thought of as a programming language. In this chapter, we start examining some of the simple features that make the shell an actual programming language. In other words, rather than just learning a series of simple shell commands, we will be delving into the actual programming features of the shell. Also, at the end of this chapter, I will introduce you to the course project. That is a project that we will be developing for the remainder of this course. Let's begin now with shell variables. We've already been introduced to variables just briefly when we were using the read command. At this point I want to go into variables in more depth and more detail. So what is a variable? Well if you're a programmer if you've programmed in any other programming language you probably already have a fairly good idea of what a variable is. For the rest of you I will take a few seconds to explain this to you. Firstly the technical definition is that a variable is a small named piece of memory that can be assigned a value. An example of a variable might be the variable called month which I am here in this example assigning a value of August to using the equal sign. We say that the variable called month contains the value of August and these values can change which means of course that I could assign another value to month. I could say well instead of assigning August to month I could now assign July to month. One way that I like to think about variables and one way that I like to explain to people that don't know what they are is that a variable can be thought of as a little box and you can put things in the box. The box might actually have a label on the front of the box. So if we relate that back to our month example, we have a little box that represents the variable month. The box has a label on the front of it. The label is month and we put things into the box. We put August into the box in this particular example. And if we ever decide to put a different value into the box, like July, then whatever was in the box before is lost. Erased from memory, if you like. The name of the variable that you can see on your screen is month. Let's now be very particular about the sorts of names that variables can have. Let's look at a list of rules regarding variable names. Firstly, variable names must be unique. That means that no two variables can share the same name. The name of a variable can only be comprised of the following characters lowercase letters, the uppercase letters, digits and the underscore character. No other characters are permitted to be used in the name of a variable. As far as the contents are concerned, that's a completely different story. You can put just about anything into the box, if you like, but the label on the front of the box must be made of just the following characters. Furthermore, the name must not begin with a digit. It begin, can begin with a letter or it can begin with the underscore. Also, these names are case sensitive. If you create a variable called month, all in lower case, and then you create a separate variable with a capital M for month, you have actually created two different variables. Moving right along, I'll take a quick note here and for the experienced programmers amongst you, the people that have already programmed in other languages before, it's interesting to note that all shell variables are strings. If you don't know what a string is, it doesn't matter at this point. The point to note here is that there are no integers, no numbers in shell variables. You can certainly assign a value of 5, say, to a variable, but that 5 will be treated as the string 5, not the number 5. What this means, of course, is that you cannot do addition using shell programming. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, they are not built in to the shell language because all shell variables are strings, not numbers. However, it is possible to do addition and subtraction in a shell script, but you have to use an extra utility program called EXPR, which we will look at later on in this course. And now for everybody again, values may be assigned to a variable using the equal sign. An example of that is sport equals basketball. We are assigning the value basketball to the variable called sport. 
Now please note that there must be no spaces on either side of the equal sign. This is different to most programming language but you simply cannot have spaces around the equal sign. If you do you will not get the results that you are hoping for. Furthermore if you need to assign a value to a variable and that value contains spaces then you have to surround the value with double quotes. For example if you wanted to assign Smith Avenue to street and Smith Avenue is two words with a space in it then you have to put double quotes around the whole lot. As an exercise right now why don't you try and do that without the double quotes and see what error messages the shell gives you. Now so far we've only looked at how to assign a value to a variable. Now the whole point of variables is that you are then able to retrieve the value in the variable at any given point in the future. So of course I have to show you how to do that. To retrieve the contents of a variable, in other words to get the value out of the box or to know what is in the box, you use the dollar sign as a prefix before the variable name like so. Here using the street example just prior we can say you live on and then we put a dollar sign and then we put the name of a variable. Now if Smith Avenue was in the box called street then what we would see on the screen would be you live on Smith Avenue. Now I'll just give you a brief demonstration of all of that. So we'll use one of those examples that I mentioned before. I can say sport equals basketball and I don't get any messages on the screen, it's just simply an assignment statement. I'll show you what happens if I try and put spaces around the equal sign. Sport equals basketball. It actually treats the word sport as the name of a command to run and we don't want that. Anyway, now I will examine the contents of the variable called sport by doing that and it simply echoes out basketball to the screen notice that the dollar sign is very important. If I just do that and say well show me the contents of the sport variable I actually just get the word sport which is probably what you'd expect if you thought about it. The dollar sign is needed to say don't just print out the word sport, print out or treat the word sport as the name of a variable and give me the contents of that variable. So you can also do things like this I like to play dollar sport gives of course I like to play basketball then also the sport variable can be assigned to something else I'll try doing this now this is going to give me an error and let's look at what the error is polo command not found now why would that be and the answer is because I didn't put quotes around the Oops, not water pole, water polo. Now that does not give me an error anymore. And I can say echo dollar sport. And of course it is now water polo. Okay, well that's a brief introduction to variables. Let's move on and now talk about environment variables.